We're just pulling into the farm to go camping for the weekend. It's gonna be a beautiful night. Um, we're excited to get the bonfire going, uh, get our dinner cooked, and just relax. But first we need to get our camper set up for camping, so that's what we'll show you in this video today. the camper is a lot easier and less stressful than actually hitching it up because we've already got to our destination now we just are here to relax and we can we can take our time uh, we still do use a checklist on our phone though just to make sure that we don't forget any of the steps uh, the first thing we always do is position the camper so that we can reach um, all the utilities so at the farm for us that's water and electric um, you may also have septic if you're at a campground um, the last thing you want to do is get all set up and then realize your septic hose doesn't reach. So make sure that all your stuff can reach before you start unhooking everything. The next thing you want to make sure is that there's room for your slide out. So if there's any trees or anything, you don't want to be too close to it. Uh, for us, we have this pole here at the farm, so I got to make sure I'm past it so that um, I have enough room for that to slide out. The next thing I'll do then is unhook all the storage compartments. Uh, just so that I can get um, add everything and I don't have to keep on um, getting my keys out to unlock stuff. So I'll do that now. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your trailer's level from side to side. Um, at the farm here, we're on a slant, uh, cement slab, so we know that it's already level side to side. Um, at a campground, uh, we would get out the level. And actually check it from side to side and then you would use your leveling blocks. Um, so you'd back up the trailer, put down leveling blocks, pull on the leveling, leveling blocks, and then measure again until your trailer um, is level side to side. Uh, once it is, then you'll chalk the wheels. On both sides, I'll go over and do the other side now. Now we need to unhook the camper from the tow vehicle. Uh, so we need to um, raise it high enough to get um, it off the thing. Uh, before I do that though, I can disconnect um, the electrical to the camper because we won't need that anymore. Um, in our case, I can take off my electric brake controller. I don't need the safety chains um, or the emergency brake hooked up anymore. So I just take all those off so they're out of the way. Um, the next thing we need to do is raise it up so that we can get our uh, sway bars off. So I will um, extend this. I do use blocks under the tongue, uh, mostly because then I don't have to jack it down as far. And sometimes uh, if you're in a driveway or something and it's unlevel, um, you'll need these just so that it can get high enough to get um, the hitch up. You only need to go high enough to get the tension off the sway bars. Once you can remove the latch and pull the bar off, you're high enough. And then we want to uh, take it back down to take pressure off of this so we can unhook the hitch ball. So we'll retract it.
Once the weight's back down on the vehicle, you can pop this pin out and open the hitch ball latch. And now we can raise it up so we can pull our vehicle out of here. So we'll extend it. Once you clear the hitch ball, you then can pull your vehicle um, out and turn it off. One thing I forgot to mention uh, that while we're uh, unhitching the trailer, I usually keep the emergency brake on in the vehicle just so that it can't it can't roll. So uh, that is one thing I forgot to mention earlier. Um, now that the vehicle's out of the way, I will raise or lower the trailer until it's level. Um, so I just checked and we need to go up a little higher in the front. So I'm extending it a little bit more. And then we usually come back here and check kind of underneath the door on this beam until it's level. So it looks like I went a little too far. So I need to come back down a little bit in the front and you just adjust that until it's level. Once your trailer's level, then you put down the stabilizers in each corner. Um, we typically, if we don't use the leveling blocks, we'll put them under um, the stabilizers just so we don't have to crank it down as far and to keep the stabilizers off the ground. And just make sure when you do drop your steps down, your door's all the way open. Um, otherwise, uh, this little thing over here will catch on the door. Depending on where you're previously camping, you might have adjusted your feet. Uh, so one thing you want to make sure is that when this goes down, the, the top of the stairs is flush to the bottom of the floor. Otherwise, your door will catch when you try to shut it. Uh, so if there's a gap there, you can just pop these pins out and slide your feet up to the next hole and then just slide the pin back in until you get the stairs secure and tight to the top. We usually open the slide out right away once we get in the camper just to have more room, um, but I always come back here check first to make sure there's nothing that fell in behind uh, the slide out in the back bunk because it would catch that on the way out. I also check in the front to make sure nothing fell down here between the bed and the slide out. And as long as that's clear, then I can open up the slide out. So I'll come here and I'll hold the out button until it's all the way out. Next, I always hook up utilities, so I'll get out my electrical tote. And my water tote. I usually do electrical first, just so that we can get the fridge running. That just screws on there. And then since we're at the farm, uh, it has 50 amp service, I need to use my adapter from 50 to 30 and my surge protector. So I always hook up my uh, surge protector first, make sure that I have power and that there's no problems. Double green up the top, green at the bottom means I have surge protection. And then I plug in the camper. As long as I get a blue light here, I know that uh, my camper has power. 
Uh, typically I'll then go in and turn on the fridge so that the fridge gets, starts getting cold again. Now we'll hook up the water. If you're curious about any of the products that you're seeing me use, I do have an accessories video on YouTube that I'll link to uh, that gives a little more detail about what all this stuff is. Uh, for water, I always hook up my water regulator first. Um, this is basically uh, will protect uh, your camper in case the water pressure is too high. It will regulate it down uh, so it doesn't hurt any of your internal plumbing. Um, next thing I do is hook up our water filter. And then our hose hooks up to our water filter. And then the other end of the hose hooks up to the camper. Into the water, uh, city water connection here. And then you just need to go back and turn the water on. At this point, the camper is fully operational. Uh, the last few things I do are put on my wheel locks and my hitch lock and put the hitch on the tow vehicle away. I don't necessarily do these right away. I just do them as I find time. So for the wheel locks, uh, they just wrap around the tire, push them till they're tight, and then pop in the lock so that it can't come back out. And then put this cap over top in case it, it rains to keep the lock um, in good shape. This is the hitch lock that we use. Um, I do show this in the accessories video, so if you want to see more about that, check that out. Um, I also need to take the hitch off my tow vehicle. I usually just take it out and then put it in the back of our tow vehicle. Um, the only other thing left then is to put away some of the electronics inside of the tow vehicle. I cover that in another video uh, where I talk about our traverse as a tow vehicle, so you can check that out there. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video, and thanks for watching.